Welcome to week 12. This is going to be the final week of my three month commitment. For this video, what I wanna do is kind of take you through where I started to where I am now. I'm gonna do that through a series of some slow motion videos, some still shots to kind of show where positions are. Maybe I'll draw some little cute stuff on the screen for you, put in some little text, make it look all official. But I'm gonna talk you through some of the pitfalls, uh, some of the mistakes that I made in the beginning, the things that I've learned, um, and, and just kind of recap and put everything in a nice little package with a little bow on it for you, uh, my progress thus far. Just because this three month commitment is over does not mean that I'm just going off and going back to my old swing or onto something else. I still have more work to do in this system. And after talking to Jim, uh, he and I have discussed it. I think I'm going to re-up my three month commitment and go for another three months. I want to see just how far it can get me. At the end of that three month period, I'll reevaluate. My future videos are not going to be just weekly updates on my progress with the swing from here on out. After all, the channel is Golf Test Dummy, not Jim's Test Dummy. So I will be giving monthly updates. Once a month, I'll be uploading a video with my progress and things using the JVGA swing system. However, I'll be, I will be uploading a video each week and those will be on other things like uh, maybe some short game stuff, how I approach the short game, what I'm working on. There will be course vlogs, of course. I'll show you some of my progress on there, my scores, some different courses and my thought processes and things like that. Uh, gear reviews, if I come across any gear that I'm trying out. I've got some brand new clubs, so I'm gonna be doing a what's in the bag. Also next week, next week's video is going to be a big announcement. So make sure you click the subscribe and the bell notification if you have not done so already. You're gonna to wanna to see next week's video. It's gonna be really cool. Jim had a great idea. He came up with this, this idea and asked me if I wanted to be on board with it. We're gonna announce that next week. Stay tuned for that. So with that, on to the review of where I started to where I am now, starting right now. This is from week one. This is the video I sent to Jim as my baseline to show my original swing. In it, you can see a square setup, a neutral position. In my backswing, my left knee really shoots out, uh, gets past my other knee, and you can see that I've turned a significant amount. In the swing I have here, I've got a lot of early extension, and I'm really going after the ball, just putting a lot of hit on it. And I've learned that that is just so inefficient and it really does nothing in the way of giving you power. So this is what we had to start with. Now here in week two or three my shoulders are closed which is excellent. My feet are lined up at the target and so is the club face. My knee still moves out a little bit which would be a recurring theme and a struggle that I still fight with today to try and keep my lower body still but I've gotten much more efficient through the shot and I have stillness through the downswing. In this slow motion swing here, you can see I stopped the club a lot shorter. I'm still putting some effort into the hit of the ball, which again, is something that a lot of golfers struggle with. This is probably from week four or five, I believe. You'll have to go back and rewatch some of the videos, but I get into a much better position with a lot less knee movement. In this slow motion swing here, you can see that it's much more fluid, I'm much more still, um, and the shots that result are now starting to become those tight, smooth draws. This may be from week number five or six, I believe, and Jim had told me, hey, you gotta drop the right foot back a little bit and see what it does for you. Um, I did not take that advice for some reason. I think it just slipped my mind. But again, I'm getting solid tight draws. I'm much more still as far as movement. There's not a lot of excess, and I'm much more efficient than I was in the beginning. On to week eight. In week eight, I had my Eureka moment. This was a serious breakthrough um, in my study of the JVGA swing. 
the wind this day was blowing about 30 miles an hour, a storm was rolling in, and I managed to find stillness in that incredibly strong wind and weather. You can see here my left knee barely moves through the swing. I'm only making half length back swings, and I'm getting really close to the same distance that I was with my old swing. Um, I think that's pretty incredible. Uh, this one, I think I'm actually back in week seven, but again, the abbreviated swing, I'm sorry, this is from week nine, shows my ball flight with the uh, tracker and proves that I'm getting solid tight draws, much more efficient movement, a lot less effort. Now, let's take a look at some of the misconceptions and, I don't know, I guess you'd call them mistakes uh, that I made along the way. Um, let's start with number one, and this is not personally my experience, okay, so I just want to throw this out there. Uh, I hear from a lot of people who watch these videos from Jim, and then they think that, you know, oh, I can, I can watch these videos, I can go out on the range a time or two, um, you know, give a, a, a little bit of time to the, the, the technique that I saw in the video, and uh, I'll just be able to pick this up from the video and you know if it works great you know I'll play with it and if it doesn't work then it's crap it's a garbage technique and it's just it's mumbo jumbo and and this is never gonna work and I'm on to the next thing um, I would say this that is not going to work for the vast majority of us there may be some people out there that watch the videos they pick it right up they're able to use it hey but great that's awesome, but uh, for a lot of us, for the huge percentage of us out there, that's not going to work. You either need to not try this at all, or you need to get in the academy. Sign up, commit for at least three months, and do as you're asked. Give it a real shot. Um, if you're not going to do that, then you really can't say that you gave this a try. The first misconception that I personally had from my experience, if we go back to week one, week one was just chipping for me. Uh, I devoted myself to just chipping. In that week, my biggest misconception or mistake was in how I thought or how I interpreted uh, that you're supposed to get your weight onto your left side. Um, it, you know, it's week one. Your expectations from yourself and from the system they kind of have to be somewhat low. You're just getting to know what this is and, and what the principles are. You don't know yet. So my biggest thing was I would shift my hips to the left and then try and turn. You, that's just, that, that's not it. In my experience, that's not the proper way to do it. The proper way to do it is to sit up nice and square and then just pivot. And when you pivot, it's not so much about turning your shoulders. It's more about turning your hips when you turn your hips, your shoulders will then in turn move with it. So you pivot, just like Jim says, you pivot into your left. You don't slide into your left. You don't slide then pivot. You just pivot. So week one, that was the biggest misconception. Uh, if we go to week two, I'm trying to remember if there was anything major that I remember from that week. Um, that was pitching. Week two was pitching. Um, I had a sand wedge most of the time, and I practiced like 30 and 50 yard pitch shots. Um, with that, I would say, hmm, I really didn't have a lot of issues that week. I feel like I was really doing uh, pretty good with that. So, week two, kind of a thumbs up on that one for me. Felt like it was all right. Uh, if we go to week three, week three had another one of those sort of... Uh, I don't know, my, it was me trying to put my little personal stuff into it, I guess, or whatever, and just kind of misinterpreting what I was supposed to be doing. So I had learned to pivot my hips and to get my weight on my left side through my pivot, but then in doing that, uh, I, I started sticking my right leg out straight, sort of clopping my foot on the ground behind me. If you go back to week three and watch that video, you'll see when it's a view straight on like this, my leg, my right leg is kind of sticking out like a tent pole. That was just weird. I tried that for a while, and I thought I was having a little bit of success with it, but I really wasn't. Um, so that was, that was that week's big kind of, ugh, what is that? 
uh, week number four and week number five. Um, the biggest misconception I would say that I had there was that if I lined my feet up at the target, down the target line where I wanted the ball to end, and then if I lined my club face up perpendicular to that target line, and then I closed my shoulders, that where I had my feet aimed was going to be where the ball ended up. That was what I was trying to use as my aiming point because Jim had said that your aim is kind of in retrospect, that you aim as you're looking back after the shot. That helps you, oh, well, that one went too far left, so I know I need to aim a little more right the next time. Uh, for me, my brain thought that I had a, a kind of a hard time accepting that, and I was like, no, 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 no. I have to know how to aim the shot before I hit the shot. Um, so my brain fought that a little bit, and I was looking for a way to be lined up, and I thought I'd use some con something conventional with my feet being lined up. That, I found out later, does not matter. Um, and as a matter of fact, when you go to week seven, I was still sitting up with my feet square, even though Jim had told me, Chad, drop your right foot back, now hit the shot. Just see what that does for you. And I still did not do it in week number seven, and in week number seven, I still had a few little things. I still hadn't found it yet. Uh, week number eight was was my big eureka moment. That was it. Uh, week number eight is where I finally found a vast amount of stillness. Um, I was really, really still. I don't know that I was statuesque, but I was very still. And I was actually hitting real solid, tight draws with good distance. And I was really only making about what I used to call about a half swing, where my arm is kind of parallel to the ground. Um... And I drop my right foot back a little bit, just a couple inches. And then it's like, okay, well, your feet, your shoulders, your hips, nothing's aiming where you want the ball to go. How are you supposed to play that way? I just know that I need to aim somewhere to the right. Um, that's hard for my brain to deal with. Um, but, and I know there's there's a lot of uh, evidence out there now with TrackMan and all this flight scope stuff and everything, but old school golfers would tell you, that where you put the club face, what you aim that at, is where your ball's gonna end up. And then where you aim your body in relation to that is gonna determine whether you hit a draw that starts where your body's aimed and finishes where the club face was aimed, or a fade that starts where your shoulders were aimed and finishes where your club was aimed. That's old school golf, that makes a lot of sense to me. So in general, I do aim my club face perpendicular to the target and whereas that's not always where the ball is going to end up exactly, it gives me a pretty good idea of where the ball is going to end up. Now, where the ball starts is, that's based off of more than just your shoulder line, I think. Your shoulders, sure, they have something to do with it. Um, but it's more about where the ball is positioned, front, back, middle, somewhere in there. Um, that it, it all comes into play. It's just more complex than that. Um, so aiming, again, I think Jim's absolutely correct. It's sort of something you learn in hindsight. Oh, that went too far left. I need to aim more right. Uh, that ended up too far right. I need to aim a little more left. And then in general, your body will start to learn, okay, this feels about right. And then you hit the shot. Um, so since week eight, you know, um, I've had a few more practice sessions. I've played once or twice. I had my course vlog after that. Um, and I have not had much of an opportunity to play or even to practice much this week. Um, so I've had some bad weather around here. Work's been crazy. I've been busy. I've had family coming in. Uh, Jim tells me, though, he assures me, he says, don't worry, your skill will be there when you get back out to the practice tee or the course. Uh, so... I've got that to look forward to, and that's honestly another little test that I can perform, and I love tests. So I'll be performing that test next time I get out on the driving range of the course and see, you know, have I still got my skill? Did it go away? Does familiarity with hitting golf shots really weigh heavily on how well you can play with this system or not? Is this something I could drop for a year, come back, and within five minutes or a bucket be hit smooth, tight draws again? Um, so, that being said, uh, now that I'm here at the end from where I started, everybody's asking about distances, they're asking about the driver, they're asking about scores, so let me just try and sum that up in a little bow 
with this. When I first started, when I would go to the range, I would hit all sorts of bad shots. Fat, thin, short, right, left, hooks, slices, blocks, too high, too low, and of course I would hit good shots along with that. Um, but since becoming familiar with this system and practicing like I've done, which has just been once a week, once a week with no play for almost three months, um, I still hit bad shots, yes, but the amount of times that I hit a fat or a thin shot is severely diminished. I hit a lot less fat and thin shots and that's simply by keeping my weight forward on my left foot and not letting it move. Um, I still hit some that maybe hook a little bit more than I wanted or stay straighter than I wanted or maybe they block, block out to the right. My bad shots now are a block, but I'll say this much about that. I had, you know, everybody talks about two-way misses and three-way misses. Man, I had a seven-way miss, I don't know, and now I think I'm down to a two-way miss. I either hit it with a, a pretty tight draw toward my intended target or I'll block it out right a little bit fairly straight. You can play with that. That is going to be much better for your game because you know I'm not going to hit it too far left. The worst I'm going to do is leave it out to the right. So that's your bailout area. If you feel like, hey, there's plenty of room over to the left, you know, you can play that way. So the number of bad shots that I hit has gone down. The severity of my, of my bad shots has gone down. And the amount of different types of bad shots that I hit has gone down significantly. Has it changed my course play yet? I've only played twice um, since then. And the first time, you all saw that on my course vlog, it was an 83. The second time, I didn't even keep score. I was playing with some friends. I, my phone just acted up. Uh, so none of the little bit of footage that I was able to collect that day, plus I didn't want all the group up, none of that took. Uh, I have since now bought myself a small tablet that I'll be doing my filming and editing with from this point on uh, because I just can't rely on my phone anymore. It, the storage and all the editing that I do on there and it's got to be my personal phone. It's just not working so I'll be switching to a little 7 inch Samsung tablet uh, from now on to be shooting all my video and editing my video. Um, so in any event, has it improved my game? I can't say for sure yet, but I feel like I feel like it already has, and I feel like it's definitely going to. Has it improved my practice and my driving range time? Most certainly, for sure. Uh, and a lot of people say, well, you know, if you can't carry it from the drive range onto the course, what good is it? And that is an excellent point, and I will be testing that out in future videos. Course vlogs coming, some short game stuff coming, some putting coming. Uh, I'll be doing a what's in the bag. I'll show you, you know, some of my new sticks that I just got in and I haven't even had a chance to get them dirty yet. Uh, but thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Be sure to stay tuned next week. As I said, there's a big announcement coming. It's a little project that Jim and I are putting together for all of you guys. Um, so give me a thumbs up. Leave me some comments below. Click the bell notification and I'll see you next time.